This chicken coop is small, portable, and affordable. I'm gonna take it out of here so we can get a better look. This might be one of the coolest things that I've ever built. It's scalable, and that's my favorite thing about building your own stuff for your homestead. Scalable simply means that you can build it to your scale based on the flock size that you have. If you have a bigger flock, you can build this exact same coop on a budget, still be mobile, but just make it bigger for the flock that suits your needs at your homestead. Let's take a closer look at the measurements so it gives you an idea of how big this coop is. So when I measure across here, I'm looking at 39 inches. I'd say 40 just to be safe. Now if we were to go the cross way, we're looking at two feet, so 24 inches. That's just the frame. With the metal siding on here, it's gonna be a little bit bigger. Of course, with the wheels and the axle, it's gonna be over 24 inches. So the height of this coop is about 22 inches. Years ago, I built a much larger coop than this, and that was because we had 15 chickens at the time. But for five chickens, this is the perfect size coop. But most people have more than five chickens, so if that's the case, just build it bigger than this one. The key is having enough nesting boxes for your hens. The general rule is to have one nesting box for every four to five hens. So if you have 10 hens instead of five, you wanna make sure you have enough space to put another milk crate. The biggest reason why this coop is so great and so easy to use are because of these flat free tires right here. These are solid rubber, flat free tires with big, thick, hard plastic spokes that will never rust. The only thing that might ever go wrong for you in the future, if you purchase wheels like this, is maybe you need to replace the ball bearings inside the wheels themselves. But being that these are solid rubber, you can run over nails and go over sharp objects. It's not really going to affect it. These wheels right here are called marathon tires or marathon wheels, and these are the 20 inch wheels. In the middle there, that axle, that is a half inch axle. It's threaded, you can buy that at any hardware store, and that goes all the way across to the other wheel. So I've got a half inch axle that's threaded going across underneath to this one right over here, as you can see. Then I just simply put washers on them on the inside, I don't know if you can see that, washers and nuts on the inside and on the outside. You want a good space in between the wheel, as you can see here, I have it on both sides. That way when you're moving this around, it's not rubbing on the coop itself. Because of these large wheels right here, you can go over rough terrain. If you're using pastured chickens in an actual pasture, not a backyard like I do, it's not gonna be perfectly flat, it's gonna be bumpy. You're gonna want big wheels to go over those obstacles. I've gone through snow with this thing, over rocks, tree roots. It loads up onto a trailer really easy with ramps. A lot of times people use those small lawnmower wheels to move their chicken shelters around, whether that's a chicken tractor or a coop, and those work just fine. But I found that this works a lot better. The only treated lumber I used was for the front legs there that support the coop on the bottom. There's one over there and there's one over here. For that, I just use old deck board. You can use whatever you want. The reason why I use what I use is because I simply have this wood laying around. I didn't purchase anything for this build except for the tires and the axle that goes through. The other treated lumber is this deck board right here. And all I did was I cut them to length and this door actually acts as a ramp as well. So if I were to open this, but it also acts as a door to secure the coop so the chickens are safe from predators. For the top and half of the side, so half of this side, half of the other side, and half of the back on the bottom, I use old metal roofing that I have laying around the property. Always save metal roofing if you're a homesteader. For easier access, I just cut this away right here and used, this is just a handle for like a drawer or something. I always keep those if I take them off of things from other projects. And when I open this, I just have two hinges on that side. What I'd like to show you are these two by twos that go across the coop. This is what the chickens will perch on at night when they go in this coop. You'll find that if you have chickens, they're gonna roost in one little area. All five chickens are gonna be in this back corner roosting. The reason why you want a bigger space for more than five chickens is simply because of the nest box. More chickens, more nest boxes needed. You can also see that axle going all the way through in the back. And to build this coop, I simply just framed out a box in this case, it's more of a rectangular shape with two by fours. You can see over here, I've got a two by six. I've got an angled 45 degree two by four right there. 
That's just to give it a little extra strength. If you have it, why not use it? I use whatever screws I had available. And the reason why I put this metal roofing in the back toward the bottom, I don't want raccoons and things grabbing them from the lower level. Predators are gonna try to grab from the bottom up or on the sides toward the bottom rather than up here at the top. And then the wire that goes around is just basic chicken wire. I've got it on the sides and I also have it on the bottom of the coop. So if you were to build a coop like this, it shouldn't really cost a whole lot after you purchase the wheels and the axle. This chicken wire right here is what I had on the property from something else. I wouldn't recommend using chicken wire only if that's the only thing you have at the time. I've never had an issue with predators breaking through the chicken wire. I've had bears, coyotes, fox, mink, all kinds of things go through this property. We have a very diverse ecosystem here living on a river system. And I've never had an issue with predators actually getting through the chicken wire. But if I could redo it again, I would probably use one inch by one inch hardware cloth because it's a lot stronger gauge. And whenever I clean this out, I normally don't do it in the winter like it is now. I just spray it with a hose. Whatever doesn't come out with a hose, I just kind of poke the manure through with a stick. The idea is that while the chickens are roosting inside here, most of the manure is falling through and going to the ground. And since we're using this leaf deep bedding method, once a lot of manure builds up in one area, all I do is move the coop and it's super easy with those big wheels. So if the manure builds up over there, I just move the coop over there. If it builds up here, I move it back there. So let's say it's the night, chickens go right in there. Of course this top is shut. Then all I do is I lift this up. It's got some hinges on the bottom. I can latch this here, and I can also latch this one right over here. Another benefit to having these large tires on here is that there's enough space underneath here. There's 10 inches for the chickens to go underneath this coop. I've seen hawks, owls, eagles around my property almost on a daily basis. And when chickens sense danger, I've seen them hurry underneath here and they feel a lot safer going underneath this coop. So because I didn't really come up with any fancy way of moving this around other than these two by fours on the sides, that's currently what I have. If I ever need to move this for whatever reason, I simply put one hand here, one hand here, and I can pick it up and move this wherever it's needed. And moving this really is not difficult. Anybody can move this coop around if they need to. So if you're thinking that your kids can help out on your homestead, Ask them to move the chickens. Maybe one kid takes one two by four, one kid takes the other one if they're smaller, and they can move the chickens for you. It's a good way to get kids involved too. So I mentioned that this two by four runs across here. That's the handle for the front to move it. With this angled 45 two by four right here, that is gonna help also with this chicken wire. It's gonna protect it. It gives you another place to staple down this chicken wire or hardware cloth if you choose to use that. So chicken wire is attached here. It's behind this two by six. It can be attached to this two by four and on this angled two by four and behind this metal roofing. It just makes it stronger. Now, just like almost anything you do, there are pros and there are cons. So I have three things I wanna warn you of in case you wanna build a coop just like this. So the first thing is severe weather. Maybe you live in an area where there are lots of tornadoes or something. This probably isn't the best coop for that simply because it can tip over really easily. At the same time, it's small enough where it's more aerodynamic than let's say a big chicken coop with a big wall on the side of it. However, it's not the best for that, but there is a solution. Whenever we look at the weather and we see that there's going to be a possibility of a tornado or severe winds, I just go, oh, okay, I'll move them into my garage. So I pick them up and I move them to a safe location, set them down. Whenever the threat is over, sometimes that's 10 minutes. Sometimes they're in the garage for the entire night. I just put some cardboard underneath, helps with the manure. And then I pull them out the next morning and we're good as new. So there is a solution, but if you're not actually at your property when bad weather comes through, you might not have chickens in very good shape when you get home. You may have been thinking this throughout the video already, but one of the concerns you may have is really cold weather. Right now, it's the beginning of January, it's 18 degrees, it's windy, I'm cold just doing this video, and that's not great conditions for chickens. In general, chickens just need two things. They need to be dry and out of the wind. I can tell you that I have had chickens survive winters in here. No chickens have ever died because it got too cold or too windy. What I do is I take a staple gun and I take clear plastic, and then I apply the plastic all the way around the coop except for the front door, obviously. So I staple clear plastic from the top. Up here, I'll staple it right onto there. 
you can actually see a staple that I've used in the past and some plastic right there. When I rip off the plastic in the spring, some of it stays on. And I go all the way down to the ground and come out about a foot or even two. Then I bury the snow on top of it to hold it in place. And I go all the way around the coop. I cover up this entire backside. Down here, a lot of wind is gonna come up, so you need to cover all that. Put the snow on top of the clear plastic. And the same thing over there. And then wherever you get most of your wind from, your cold winds, like here it's gonna be north, northwest winds in Wisconsin. I'm gonna make sure that door is in the opposite direction from that. Northwest is this way. I'm gonna take this coop and move it so the back of the coop is facing northwest and the opposite direction from northwest, that would be southeast of course, is this door facing this way. And without having that plastic on the front, that's not really a big deal, because that's pretty windproof up here, and then down there, I just push a whole bunch of snow underneath it, and that helps a lot of the updrafts that go around the coop. The reason why I use clear plastic is because I wanna create that greenhouse effect, so that when the sun does come out, on those cooler days, it warms up the coop, just like it would in an actual greenhouse. It's also nice because it provides more natural light for the chickens inside the coop, rather than making it really dark. The last con, or concern I guess I should share with you, if you're interested in building something like this, are these 2x4s. You do not need these 2x4s to move them. You can do something where these get removed on a daily basis, maybe they slide into something or whatever, but because of these 2x4s, the chickens want to roost on there at night and silly me assumes that they're going to go into the coop but every now and then you'll have the lead hen climb up here and she'll roost and all the other chickens do. You'll have all five chickens or, or however many you have roosting on these two by fours not going inside the coop. And for me where I live and maybe where you live too that's not good because we have a ton of owls here. I have lost chickens because they have gone on this two by four and they get killed by owls at night. It's 100% my fault, but I have a feeling that if these 2x4s weren't on here, they would probably go in the coop and never roost here to begin with. Obviously, a solution to that is to make sure they go inside their coop every single night before you go to bed. I just got in the habit of them going in there and me not having to worry about anything because they're in their chicken run, they're in their coop, and if they're in their coop, aerial predators like an owl or any other bird of prey is not going to go in their coop and actually attack the chickens. They're going to attack them when they're out roosting and kind of sleeping or really vulnerable. Let's take a closer look at this nesting box. You can see I have leaves in there. We use that instead of straw and hay. We have tons of deciduous trees that drop all of these leaves. So we pick them up and use them. And sometimes the leaves fall through the crate because the holes in the milk crate are too big. So you can see this black it almost looks like snow fencing. You can find this in lawn and garden departments. It comes on a big roll four feet long or four feet high and like 50 feet long. So I put this in there just to keep the leaves in there. It works better instead of them falling through. And then to secure the milk crate, I use screws that go directly onto this back two by four. So if you have two milk crates, you'll want to make sure you have uh, the same setup, one right next to each other or three or however many chickens you have. And then it's also resting on this two by four that goes from this post right here over to that one here. And you can tell that there's a good amount of space underneath. So when the manure does fall, it de then again falls down toward that axle. And then most of the time I have to push it out with a stick or spray it out with a hose so it goes on the ground. There are a ton of ways to raise chickens and this is just the way that works for us. When we started raising chickens, instead of having them in the small coop for the winter, we actually put them in a shed in our garage, one of our garages anyway, and just built a little coop on the corner and we thought that'd be better for the winter months, which it was, except we ended up having too many rats. So that was a no-go. Another good option is like a dog house or a little playhouse. When we moved to the property, there was a house here. I think the guy used it for ice fishing and it was really heavy. We couldn't move it anywhere, but it would have worked really well for a chicken coop if we would decide where we wanted the chickens to be. The downside of building something in a shed or using a heavier coop like that is that you can't move it in severe weather or if you're not happy with the chickens being where you have them to begin with. Having a mobile coop that we keep moving around and putting next to our garden and places that suit our needs is a much better benefit, at least in our situation. Last year I raised some chickens for some people up to the point where they were laying eggs. So we had them in the brooder here and then we had them outside until they were about five or six months old. And that worked really well because I have extra ch chicken tractors. If you know what a chicken tractor is, it's something we use for meat chickens. Meat chickens, they don't live long 
eight to 12 weeks and they get pushed around in these little shelters with these little wheels and you move them to fresh grass each and every day. We've been doing that for several years now. And what you can also use if you don't want to use an actual chicken coop and you're not sure at the time, you can build a chicken tractor, something that's relatively flat to the ground, inexpensive, put some metal roofing on the top, and you can actually move these chickens to fresh new grass every day. And with using chicken tractors or these little portable chicken shelters, they only need to be like two feet high. When the chickens are in there at night, you want it perfectly flat. And then all you have to do is tilt one end up and put a cinder block or a stump or something underneath it. That way the chickens get out, get out through the day. And then you can kind of move that coop around inside. Just like I use this coop, this one with the bigger wheels, it is an option. And there's a million ways that you can raise chickens on your homestead. So don't be limited to what people tell you to do online. Find what works for you on your homestead and you're going to be happy you did. If you're new to raising chickens, my number one tip is to not have too many. I think starting with three to five is actually the perfect amount. So maybe this is a good coop for you. If you have more chickens you'd like to build this, just keep in mind that the nest box needs to increase. Every five chickens, you're going to need an additional nesting box. Hope you appreciate seeing this chicken coop. Maybe it gave you a nice idea for you and your homestead and how that can benefit you and your family.